Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm uh, very grateful to have our wonderful teacher, Jack Stocken, back with us for another interesting hand. Hey there, Jack. Hey, good morning, Gugier. Nice to be back with you. All right, so uh, you told me you have a tricky one for us. Uh, yes, I Anything think... you want to say to set it up before I load it up? Well, I just think we might need Houdini or someone with his magic skills to help us on this one, Bajir, because it, it's a really hard one. But the good news is you can press the pause button and have a look to see if you can unlock the puzzle. The, it's well, something it, that uh, we can't do here. So, yeah, take advantage of your magic and we'll see what Jack's magic, what magic Jack has in store for us. Okay. Correct. Let's, here we go. All right. Here's our hand. Yeah. So, we're playing Ackle today, Bajir. So, um, South opens uh, one heart, playing four card majors. Okay. Yep. Uh, so we're playing Akka, which is what I teach online, as you know. Uh, West makes an normal overcall of two clubs. Nice hand, West has. Yeah, nice hand. I wouldn't want to make a weak jump overcall, but a week, you could bid three clubs as a weak jump overcall, but we are vulnerable and it could have quite a few losers. So I'm happy with two clubs there. But what does North bid now, do you think? Well, even. Uh... Even with that ACL opening, we we have a lovely heart fit. We're vulnerable. Can we just jump to four hearts and feel good about it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the vulnerability doesn't matter here, uh, but we've got, it's a good one for the losing trick count. Um, mm. And I'm sure you're counting seven losers, aren't you? Yes. Just yeah. definitely. So most of us would jump to four hearts here. Well, most improvers would. Um, but today, Bajir, we're an experienced partnership. We are going to bid four, and I'm going to alert it, clubs. Clubs? But we only have one of them. <laughs> well, that's because we've agreed, me and my partner, to play splinter bids, which, funny enough, I covered a few months ago uh, on my online class, in my online class. So this Bajir is a, a double jump. It's a singleton club or a void and a good raise to four hearts. So typically seven losing tricks. And it depends on what? We couldn't do that without West's bid. No, we could. So um, at West's not bid, at West pass, we'd have still a bid four clubs. Great. So the fact that West has bid doesn't matter. So, you know, even though West has overcalled, we still bid four clubs. It's a double jump. Uh, it's, a, it's a gadget. You know, it's a conventional bid, a splinter bid. Uh, very useful for more experienced players. And even those of you who don't use ACL, if just pretend your partner opened one heart uh, showing, you know, perhaps different strength, but your splinter bid response could work in the same way. Correct. Even if you're playing a five card major, which, you know, the rest of the world plays, basically, uh, you still bid four clubs there. Uh, even better, knowing you've got a 10 card half it, but you do have to learn splinter bids and agree them with your partner. But it is very useful because otherwise, you know, it's a bid you'd never otherwise use. And, you know, four hearts isn't that descriptive. So we, we turn it back to south now. And we, and can, we it is the point because we're wondering, maybe we're not going to stop at game. Partner, That's what else? Right. That's right. Obviously, we're committed to game. You must have a raise to four hearts. But, yeah, it's a good way of bidding to slam uh, splinter bits. You know, they're far more descriptive. So what happens now, Bajir, south evaluates their hand. Do they like the splinter bit, do they think? You know, partner's got at least four hearts. You know, they've got a singleton club. Is that useful for South? Sure is. It is. You know, I mean, ideally, the best holding opposite a singleton would be, say, like, say like four little ones or four to the ace. So we've got right. a reasonably good holding here, ace-jack. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it's amazing. I'd say it's kind of, you know, middling. Uh, but we've got a nice hand. We've got lots of aces. Right. You know. So ideal, if it turned four losers into one loser, then we're we're uh cheering right we'd now be really cooking if we had like four clubs to the ace because then probably we're going to be able to rough three clubs in dummy you know right. that's like three extra tricks so this is a reasonable holding okay um you know i'd be marginal about going on to slam but i'm in a good mood so i'm going to go four no trumps <laughs> <laughs> uh we're playing roman keycard blackwood today how are your roman keycard blackwood responses Folks watching, what do you think? So again, this isn't just aces. This is aces and kings in our agreed suit. Correct. So the king of trumps is the fifth ace if you're playing the more advanced version of black. If you're playing normal black, would you just come back five diamonds, uh, one ace? But here you've got two key cards. That's the king of trumps, 
which is the King of Hearts and the Ace of Diamonds, so you bid five hearts. So that's two key cards out of the five without the Queen of Trumps. Quite complicated Roman key card, Blackwood. Again, it's a lesson we've done recently online. Members of your class can, of course, review uh, both that and the Splinter Bid lesson and go into yeah. much greater depth for both of well, those. Well, we've got all five key cards, but it's a very balanced uh, 17 count. So we're just going to settle for six hearts here. I'm not going to look for a Grand Slam at all uh, with such a balance. I mean, it was marginal move. I mean, definitely after one heart, four hearts, South wouldn't look for Slam with a balanced 17, by the way. Uh, right. It's only because they've shown a singleton club that South got remotely interested. Mm. Um, if you get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in six hearts. King of Clubs is the standard lead. Now, this is a very good time for the viewers. They will be able to pause this video, make themselves a cup of tea, and have a good think about this, because even though I've thanked Partner for the dummy, mm. I'm a little bit, you know, concerned that I pushed on for a borderline slam, because there appear to be two spade losers, Bashir, do they not? Yeah, this the spade, uh, the, and of course, um, you know, we're we're putting on our blindfold. We can't see east or west hands, but um, it's a bit a bit scary. It's scary, you know. Um, it was a marginal decision to go on, um, but and also the king of spades is much more likely to be with west because they were the ones who overcalled two clubs vulnerable. Mm. I hope the Stuart, uh, students are making a note of that. And you can always look at the bidding by clicking on Six Hearts South, by the way. Some right. of you might not know how to do that. It brings up the bidding for you. Um, well, hey, am so I right, not... Jack, then, that, you know, hey, hey, and I wonder, some of the beginners, some of us improvers watching, we're coming up with a plan. We might just easily rely on, okay, let's, let's draw two rounds of trumps and then let's try finessing to the queen. But we'll end up in a heap of trouble if we do that. We're going to be, you know, I think most improvers, intermediates would do that, Bashir. They draw the trumps, yeah. they play a spade for the queen, yeah. losing to the king, and they'd lose two spade tricks. No way of getting out of that. You know, it's going to be one down. Um, funnily enough, six diamonds is a really good contract here in the 4-4 four, four fit, uh, because then you'd get a spade away on the long hearts, but yeah. impossible to get to six diamonds, uh, which is an amazing contract. That's a really, really good contract. Also, Bajir, we've got to think about the Trumps as well. We're going to come on to that. So I've actually made a plan now. Should, yeah. I, should we have a look at it? Yes. Take us, challenge, push us to the next level of our thinking, Jack. And I'm How just going to give we... a clue. Yeah, I'm going to give a clue to the students here. I'm going to look at the importance of that opening lead. So I know that mm. West has the Queen of Clubs. So that's a clue uh, that I'm just going to give you at this early stage. Hmm. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, is there any way I can kind of keep West on lead at some point um, and get them to play spades for me? All right. So that's a clue. Cool. Should we go? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. The first hurdle, there's the Trump suit. Bashir, you know, if they're two and two, you know, eight ever, nine never, that's fine. But if they're three and one, you know, Houston, we've got a problem. Right. Um, so I'm going to ask you, Bajir, would you start by playing the King of Hearts or would you start by playing the Ace of Hearts or don't you think it really matters? Just trying to look at the North-South cards, by the way. Right. So everyone, yeah, put on your blinders. Uh, yeah. Ignore what we see in East and West hand. Um, right. So if we were to play two rounds of trumps, does it make a difference if we go to the King first or go to the Ace first or play the ace and then go to the king. Well, I get, I, it makes me wonder, Jack, how do we know which of our opponents to be more worried about? Well, and, definitely, we, yeah, yeah, definitely you would think that East would have length in hearts, you know, with West having overcalled two clubs. Um, hmm. But what we need to do here, most important, is to what we call retain the finesse position. So the finesse position here is the ace, 10 of hearts. Interesting. Help me make sure I really understand that. Usually when we're talking about finessing, we're thinking about finessing a queen or a jack. You're telling yeah. me we might want to finesse that 10? Well, yes, we might. If there's a singleton honor, if there's a singleton honor with West, then 
yeah, finessing is going to be the thing. By the way, if West has three hearts to the Queen 9-2, then we're toast. Yeah. There's nothing we can do. But what we must do here, Virginia, I think improvers would do this. You know, it's called retaining the finesse position. Start with the king. Yeah. I sometimes call it the lone honour, if you like, in these situations. Mm. And look, something very interested, interesting has just happened. The Jack of Hearts has popped up with West. I'm sure you noticed that. Right. So what does that tell? Does that give us a clue about where the queen might be? It's a massive clue. It's called the principle of restricted choice. And, you know, look it up online after the lesson. Uh, there'll be loads of stuff on it. You know, principle of restricted choice at bridge. Um, if that honor, you know, if an honor turns up there, like the jack or the queen, it yeah. becomes twice as likely that missing honor is with the other player. It's mathematical theory. I don't understand mathematical theory, but I just know that it works. <laughs> Two thirds of the time, Bajit. So hang on, second player play low. So which one are we going to play now? Wow. So I, I, again, if you know you hadn't been slowing us down, challenging us to really think about it, at this point, I think I would be so scared of losing this trick that I would play the ace. But a lot of a lot of improvers would because you've you've pushed us to think. Well, with where is the queen more likely to be if we've already seen the jack come out of West's hand? Can Correct. we muster That's up the correct. courage to play the ten? The more experienced player, Bajir, would play the ten here, and they would only mm. lose one third of the time when West started with queen jack. Mm. And let's face it. You know, 3-1 is more likely than 2-2 two, two anyway, by about 10%. Mm. You know, it's quite a large margin. Uh, but no, it's all down to this principle. And look, happy days are... Oh. Everyone, breathe a sigh of relief. Well, I am, because, you know, if we'd have got the hearts wrong, we'd be definitely won that. So now we draw the last trump. Now, Bajir, what do you think we do next? Well, let's see. We're, We're going to have four diamond winners. We can deal with that club, the uh, jack of clubs. You can rough the jack of clubs in dummy. That's a loser. But we're still a trick short, aren't we? But it, just in principle, what should we do next anyway, do you think? Should we rough the club in dummy? Should we take the spade finesse? What do you think? Can we play through those diamonds and see if we get any ah. clues about where things are? Yes, yes, very good. So basically what we're doing is we're preparing ourselves for an end play. And this hand is really difficult, even if you can see all four hands. I suspect that many of you wouldn't have been able to see the winning line at the very beginning of this hand. I wonder if you can see it a bit more now. I have been dropping a few clues, haven't I? You have. But we are preparing ourselves for a sort of end play here. And to prepare for an end play, you need mm. to play out your side suit winners look is what we're doing creating a void in both hands mm. okay now we're in quite a good position here Bajir. we got void in diamonds what card do you think we play now well from our own hand we're in hand we've cleverly got back to our own hand of course with the queen of diamonds which is where we want to be do you think we should play the Jack of Clubs? You know, Jack, I've known you now long enough where it's like the sun starts to shine through the clouds and I start to get a sense of the magic that you are going to share with us. Yes, if I, have a, if I had a wand, I would definitely wave it around right now because there is magic in the air. Um, and we've noted that West led the King of Clubs. They must have the Queen, so they cover the Queen as they would. And now, Bajir, faced with the dummy, what do you think we're going to do? Well, I know if, um, if it was me on my own, you know, <laughs> I would play a heart. You would trump it. I yeah. think most improvers, intermediates would. But you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Some of your magic. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to play a loser on loser technique. So a loser goes from the dummy. And the beauty of this is a loser on loser with an end play. So now West is left on lead, aren't they? Is that a good thing? And you, you even, you told us 
early on in this hand that we wanted West to lead into South's hand. We, we wanted to do this. Correct. This was something now I said earlier. There, and the side two's taken care of. Yeah, we've eliminated the diamond. So they've got, West has no safe exit now. If they lead the 10 of clubs, look, we get a rough and a discard. Mm -hmm. We discard the losing spade and we rough in our own hand. And we make the last three tricks. A rough. So let's go back in time. They probably wouldn't do that. What they would do instead was hope that partner had the queen or the ace of spades. Mm -hmm. So they play a spade. Hang on. So they forlornly play a spade, hoping that partner's got the queen. They're unlikely to have the ace. But no, they are end played. They've just led into the jaws of the ace queen. I think we can finish this off. Ace of spades, of course. And we'll just oh, finish beautiful. the party. We'll just finish the party. I love it. <laughs> I love we're, it. Yeah, we're just finishing off now. So really a loser on loser play there, Bajir, uh, culminating in an end play. Beautiful. It says Beautiful. 980, by the way. It means 1430. We are vulnerable. Um, but I thought that was, <laughs> it was quite a fun hand, that one. Oh, it's an incredible hand. And the number of lessons that are uh, wrapped up in this one hand, uh, pretty incredible. Just, yeah, just fantastic. Well, as you say, yes, we've got we've got this we've got this the losing trick count if you don't play splinters, uh, bidding to four hearts. We've got the splinter bid if you play splinters. Uh, we've certainly got the the principle of restricted choice in there with the trump suit, and then of course that really difficult loser on loser play uh, end playing where. So yeah, I hope the uh, viewers enjoyed that, Bashir. And of course, um, as you know, I teach online three times a week. Not generally not hands as hard as that though. No. I, although I'll be impressed, your intermediate class on Monday, quite a few folks, they've, they've been progressing, everyone's getting better, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a good number of folks in that class might have had a sense of where things were going. Well, yes, we have with the intermediates, they're doing really well now. We have done end play with them. You know, we have done these, uh, some of these more slightly advanced conventions. So, yes, I'll be interested to see if they got that one right. Well, uh, folks watching, um, if uh, you're an ACL bidder, Jack has lessons at LearnBridge Online uh, for you, whether you're a beginner, improver, intermediate, you'd be most welcome to join us. You can try his class for free and if you have any questions about it, there's a link below um, this video. Uh, you could even watch a sample lesson. And uh, of course, reach out to me here at LearnBridgeOnline.com uh, with any questions. Um, we'd love to welcome you to any of Jack's classes. Thank well, you, Jack. That's a very cool hand. Yeah, and I really enjoyed uh, sharing it with the viewers and the students. And uh, yes, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm online three times a week uh, for 52 weeks of the year. Well, 51 week of the year. I sometimes have Christmas day off, don't I? Hard working man. Hardest working man in Bridge. Speaking <laughs> of, Jack, we have a lesson in seven minutes. So I think yeah. we better wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, I better go. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jack. Bye, all. Bye.